the outfit, Steve. That the long hair. I like all the look. mime. I like the mime that you're doing too. <laughs> the outfits, the hair, <laughs> the thing. <laughs> How did you arrive at that particular costume? It's fantastic. Um, that. one doesn't arrive at something like that. That's something. That's like a train wreck. That's not. It's, <laughs> it's not even a rival. It's uh, you know, the costume designer comes up with these outlandish ideas, and you try on a velour jumpsuit that's cut down to here. And you say things like, oh, maybe there should be more sparkles. And like, that's really, like, where, where do you go from there? Oh, the wig, maybe it should be a little more blonde and longer. Um, and what I found too was, as outlandish as these looks are, it doesn't, it doesn't stand out in Vegas. In the reality of Las Vegas, the, this isn't too far off. How does it help in the, for the performance? It, it definitely informs the character. You know, you, you put on an outfit like this, you put on a wig and spray tan and a velour jumpsuit, you're going to act differently. Even if you don't want to, you're going to act differently. Um, why do magicians become magicians? Boy, that's... Uh, I, it's hard to... It would be hard to, for me to answer that with a, a blanket statement. In this movie, Bert becomes a magician. I like the way I did that. It's like kind of a magician-y. I point to it with my pinky. Bert becomes a magician because he's a lonely kid um, who just finds something that speaks to him and that he has a passion for and that he's good at. And I think that's generally why people decide to do whatever they do is because it's something that helps define them. It's something that they love and that they, um, they have a passion for. Now, you had to learn a, a couple of magic acts yourself, right? A little for this, bit, for yeah. The, for the show. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what, what did you learn about magicians? What, what, is it, how, what, make, what makes them different than, say, other people? Um, magicians are very committed to this art form, and it really is that. It's an art form. They, they spend countless hours studying, and, and sometimes to varying degrees of success. I think it's like any other art. You know, you study, and you toil, and you labor, and you try to become as good as you can, and then who knows where it goes from there, whether, you, whether it catches on and you become a big, uh, successful performer or not. You know, there are plenty of very, very good magicians who are, you know, who are not you know, doing the big stages on Vegas. So I think a lot of it's luck at that point. Now, you got to work with some really good, funny actors. Really good. Um, it's, it's, this is, what, your third time with, uh, with Alan Arkin? Yeah, yeah. And I hope many, many more times. I can't believe he didn't bring me in onto Argo. He did a movie without me. I don't, I don't know why he did that to me. It's so sad. Um, Steve, what are the similarities between uh, Hollywood and Las Vegas? The hmm. business, the business of Las Vegas. I think it can be. I think both can be very competitive. Um, I think both can be very cutthroat. Uh, I think many times the new replaces the old, um, and people are looking for the next big thing. So I think there are. I think there are similarities, but at the same time. Ultimately, what is old is new again, and people like to get back to their roots and to uh, and and rediscover uh, things and and people that um, were at one point were one point that you know that cutting edge thing. Um, so I think there I think there are all sorts of contrasts and parallels. Do you sometimes feel a little insecure before before a role? Before? Only during this interview. It's the only time I felt insecure today. <laughs> Actually, all month. <laughs> one of the funniest, one of the funniest things about this movie is is the way uh, th these guys treat Nicole. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, Bert is such, a, and he's he's very misogynistic too, and just has no respect for these assistants, and they have a different assistant every month because these women can't take it anymore because he's such a pig. Um, and finally, the character of, of 
Olivia Wilde comes in and takes over as the assistant, and she won't she won't take any of it, and she immediately tells Bert what she thinks of him, and I think grudgingly gains his respect, and uh, and I think he starts to learn a little bit about himself through her because she's such a strong, um, intelligent, and uh, an un un yielding woman.